Greetings, Anatomy students. This is the preview video for group two muscles. These muscles are going to focus on the superficial muscles of the chest and the shoulder. There are also a couple of um, review muscles as well. So um, let's get started. So I have the mare um, on his side and um, let me zoom out for you. I'm gonna move him over because the area that we're going to focus on um, includes this area here where the uh, clavotrapezius is and then it's gonna run caudally down to where the elbow kind of comes up um, and meets the back. Um, so all of this is going to have to be removed so that you can see and study those muscles. So let me do a little bit of that for you right now. And so remember, like you don't want to get don't go directly to your scalpel because the back of this mink is going to have um, quite a few really thin, um, fragile muscles that are easily ripped. And so I'm just going to pull up and, you know, if, if, if you don't want to use your fingers, that's fine. You can certainly use the forceps that are found in your dissection kit. Um, but again, I'm just kind of lifting and scraping, lifting and scraping, and I'm just going to go to um, the area of the spine. Um, I'm not going to need to go any further than that because I'm only going to do one side. If you have time and patience and the desire to do the other side, then of course you can do that as well. Um, so let me just keep going here. And let's see. Again, I'm just using the my fingers because I don't want to um, tear any of the muscle tissue. So again, I'm just kind of pulling up, snipping a little bit, like so. There we go, so that we can see that tan color underneath. It also looks like we have um, like quite a bit of fascia here on the arms. So again, being real careful, just kind of peeling. I know I probably am going to ruin food for you all, but it is kind of like peeling an orange. And I'm just defining these muscles by removing the fat that surrounds them. I just thought it might be helpful for you to just see how I do this, but if you wanted, if you're done watching me do it, that's fine. Then just pause it and you can fast forward to where I go to the, you know, muscle identification. But sometimes I think it, it helps if you're feeling a little bit unsure to just watch someone do it. And again, like the, the point here is to define the muscles so that you can see them and study them and see how they're arranged in relationship to each other. Just a quick brief reminder, you know, when you're using the scissors, just keep the tips up so that you're, you're not cutting through into the tissue that you're supposed to be studying. I hope my whole hand isn't in the way. Oh no, that's a pretty good picture actually. There we go.
And like I said, if you need to fast forward, then that's fine. That's pretty okay. Um, let's just do a little bit. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I think so. Do a little bit more over here. Um, in this muscle group, there is um, one landmark that's a little bit, uh, that's kind of interesting. It's a hole that's filled with fat and that's going to mark uh, the start of one muscle and the end of the other. It's in between the clavotrapezius and a muscle called the acromiotrapezius. And so I'm trying to find that hole of fat so that I can show that to you. Um, if the word acromiotrapezius sounds a little bit familiar to you, it's because the root acromio we've seen before, and we've seen it when we were studying the skeletal system, and we were uh, looking at the scapula. The scapula, if you recall, has um, a process called the acromion process, and remember that acromio means high point. So the acromiotrapezius is simply a, um, a muscle that's going to be found over the shoulder. So here, like you can see, like I do have a little bit of like fat here in between these two muscles. So I'm gonna continue to try and like just get a real nice margin to that muscle like so, so that we can see it really well. Lift it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, um, so let's get started. I think that I'm at a good place here. Okay, so um, the first muscle is the clavodeltoid, and this is a review muscle. But as you look at the lateral aspect of the mink, you can see a portion of the clavodeltoid right here. So this is clavodeltoid. So here's the arm of the mink, and clavodeltoid is just kind of on the very front side of it. So it's going to pull on that humerus uh, when it contracts in order to move um, the paw anteriorly, like so. So that's clavodeltoid. All right, let's move on to the ventral aspects. That's the next muscle that we have. Um, our next one is called the pectoralis major. And the pectoralis major is going to come right across the chest here. So here you can see where it inserts onto the sternum. And it's going to come right across the chest, kind of like a sports bra. And then it's going to insert right next to clavodeltoid on the humerus. So you can see the fibers of the muscles that are coming across like so. And, you know, if you wanted to really define it, um, you can kind of get your probe in underneath, like where sternomastoid um, meets it, and just like lift it up a little bit here. But I mean, on my mink, I feel like I can see it really well. Now, if you pull the arms out a little bit, um, you can see, let's see if I can use my probe, yep. You can see right along here um, where the fascia is just kind of lifting up a little bit. So, you know, again, if you wanted to really define pectoralis major, just kind of, you can try and get your probe under there, um, you know, and just push up on that fascia so that you can see that muscle maybe a little bit better. You know, I'm not digging real far. I'm just kind of um, outlining it 
with my probe here. Because again, if you go too deep, then you're going to cut into some of the other muscles. And so like I said, you can kind of see it's almost like a sports bra coming right across. So that's pectoralis major. Pectoralis minor is going to form, uh, the fibers are going to run in a V shape coming down. And again, you can see that pretty well on my uh, on the mayor here. Um, if I really wanted to spend the time, I could, you know, scrape off this fat. That would be fine. But really, this fat isn't um, isn't occluding my view of those fibers, um, so I can leave it there. And you know, down here by the at the at the very bottom. Um, you can like lift that up a little bit and you know again if you really wanted to you could neaten up the margins of the muscle by just kind of cutting where the the fat and the muscle meet like so and now you have a really nice um, delineation you know a really nice definition here between the two um, you could do that over on the other side as well if you wanted to. So pectoralis major and then pectoralis minor. Okay, now we have our latissimus dorsi. And we're going to move um, the mayor. So here's the, the head. I'm going to move that out of the view. Here's the arm. And uh, my finger is on his elbow. And the latissimus dorsi is this long, broad, flat muscle. And if I gently take my probe and come under here and lift it up. Um, I'm just kind of running it underneath. You, you could even like use your finger to get under there in order to lift up that muscle. Um, then you'll be able to, to see it really well. Now you don't wanna tear the muscle. Look at it, it goes all the way back here. Like I said, it's a really um, long muscle that we're looking at here. So I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. I could keep on going. You can if you want to on yours, uh, on your specimen. Um, but I think uh, like for, for our purposes in this video, we're, we're, we're at a good spot here. And again, um, let's just cut through the fat, let's trim it so that we have a really nice definition. Okay, there we go, whoops, he failed. So this is my latissimus dorsi and I got some more fat there that I wanna get off. Okay, there we go. So this big broad muscle here, that is latissimus dorsi. Clavotrapezius, here we go. This is another review muscle. So remember, we saw clavotrapezius when we did muscle group one. Here is our jugular vein. Clavotrapezius is lateral to it. Um, and so clavotrapezius is going to start up by the spine and then wrap all the way around. And then remember that it comes all the way down to the clavicle where it then turns into clavodeltoid. So this is clavotrapezius. Now what we're going to do is look at a couple, two other trapezius muscles. So we have clavotrapezius, and then over the shoulder we have a chromiotrapezius, and then caudal to chromio, uh, chromiotrapezius we have spinotrapezius. So when we... Um, like I, I was kind of cleaning off a uh, part of clavotrapezius here, and as I did, I can see that I've got um, a couple of um, of other uh, fatty places here. So I want to just take some of that off. Um, the border between uh, clavotrapezius and acromiotrapezius is pretty. Um, hard to find, um, but right about here in this area, um, there is um, kind of like a, uh, an area that is covered and filled with fat. And so that is one way where you can tell when clavotrapezius ends and acromiotrapezius begins. Um, yeah, it's not as uh, easy on this specimen as it has been um, in past specimens for me to find that, but let's see what I can do here. Ah, 
There it is. All right. Yep, so in here, there's kind of like a pit of fat. And um, so I'm just kind of trying to find that for you. Um, you don't have to take all of the fat out, but it does help to kind of separate um, for you to see where a chromiotrapezius begins. So um, here was that hole, and there's like more stuff inside. We'll, we'll leave that there for now. But um, so this is clavotrapezius, and then caudal to that, we have a chromiotrapezius, and again, that's going to begin up by the spine and come on down over the shoulder. And then caudal to a chromiotrapezius, and again, I've got some more fascia to get off here. There's usually like a, a pretty good store of fat right along the spine. Be really careful, though, like when you're cutting it because it's easy to like cut the muscle off. Um, and so this is a chromiotrapezius here, and then caudal to chro a chromiotrapezius, and I'm trying to, like I can see it right here. It's a thin triangular muscle, and it lies right on top of latissimus dorsi. And... Let me just, oh, sorry, you might not be able to see all of that, what I'm doing. Here we go. And let's see if I can't define it, the border for you over here. There we go. Okay. It's not perfect, but... I think you get you get the idea. Okay. So we have three trapezius muscles. One here. Here's that little fat hole. Here's the second one. And then here's the third one. So this one up here, that's clavotrapezius. Caudal to it, a chromiotrapezius. And then caudal to chromiotrapezius, uh, chromiotrapezius is spinotrapezius, which we have right here. And spinotrapezius is lying right on top of latissimus dorsi. Okay, what else do we have? Now we need to find spinodeltoid. So spinodeltoid is kind of easy to find because if you follow the margin of spinotrapezius, it points directly to spinodeltoid. And if I scrape some of this off, we should be able to see spinodeltoid. So spinodeltoid is going to lie right on top of the spine of the scapula. And it kind of forms the lower border of a chromiotrapezius as well. And so let's just do a little bit more cleanup here. And so spinodrapezius, which is here, if you follow the margin all the way down, it points directly to this muscle right here. And this is spinodeltoid some of that. I just grabbed the forceps out of my kit here, so that is spinal deltoid. And uh, again, if you're feeling a little bit of frustration, like how is she even able to see all this, just remember it just takes practice. You guys haven't even tried to see these muscles on your specimen yet, so um, you know, just Remember the landmarks. Remember the little tricks that I'm telling you, like the fat hole and, um, you know, how to find spinodeltoid and, um, you know, by following the margins. So that's, that's definitely going to help you in the lab. Okay, so 
Again, it's not totally perfect, but I think it's good enough. It's, so uh, spinodeltoid is right here. Finally, uh, what else do we have? Omo cervicalis, also known as the levator scapulae. Omo cervicalis um, is a real tricky one to find. So here is spinodeltoid, and Omo cervicalis is right here. I can see it on uh, the mayor here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so that I can show you a little bit better. So uh, here you can see the direction of spinodeltoid kind of coming down at an angle. And then right next to it, there's a, there's a pit where, the, where the, the spine of the scapula is. And then you can see that the direction of the fibers change. And they're actually running parallel. They're running this way, this way, this way. And they actually dive underneath clavotrapezius. This muscle here, we're not going to cut clavotrapezius yet, but this muscle here is omo cervicalis. And um, again, I don't want to, I'm just going to go under it and see if I can't, um, I don't want to separate it from my, uh, the spine of the scapula, not, not yet anyway. Eventually we will. But yeah, it does that deep dive underneath clavotrapezius. Let's cut some of this fascia off here so that we can see it maybe a little a little bit better. Zoom out for you so you can see what I'm doing. And again, if you don't need to watch me take the fat off and stuff, then don't. Go ahead and fast forward. There we go. So almost cervicalis is right here. Um, it has the fibers running like um, parallel to the, the mat, to the floor. And then it dives underneath. It's actually a much longer muscle than it appears, but it dives underneath clavotrapezius. And then this stuff here that I just kind of unearthed, this is more of that um, fat from that fat hole that I was telling you about. So that's all in there. Let's see if I can't make that a little bit neater. There we go. All right. Yeah, now you can see all of that stuff. That's under there, all that connective tissue. But right here, my probe is underneath omo cervicalis there. Okay, three more muscles to go. These are all on the arm. The first one is called dorsoepitrochlearis. Dorsoepitrochlearis. I know it sounds kind of silly to sing it like that, but it does help. And dorsoepitrochlearis is gonna is found on the upper arm of the mink and right along the back. And um if you just um, gently kind of push it away with your probe, you're really able to separate it from the rest. It's also very easy to like accidentally tear it from the rest and we don't wanna do that, but we just wanna kind of separate it out. So this muscle that we have right here, this is dorsoepitrochlearis. The next muscle is the long head of the triceps. Now, as the name implies, triceps means three heads. There's three parts to the triceps muscle, the long head, the lateral head, and the medial head. From this view of the mink, we can only see the long head and the lateral head. We'll see the medial head later on. The long head is a little bit of muscle that we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do a little bit of definition so that you can see it. And again, while you're in the lab, that is what your, your aim is. Your aim is to define these muscles so that you can see them and their orientation to each other. So there we are. There's the lateral 
or I'm uh, not lateral. This is the long head of the triceps here. Sorry, there's some goop there. The long head of the triceps, and then directly below it, this band of muscle here. This is the lateral head of the triceps right here. So I'm just going to get my probe under there, see if I can't get some of this off. I know like you're going to want to start taking the fascia off the forearm. I'm going to urge you not to because that's going to be the very last muscle group, like muscle group seven that we go through. Um, and so we don't want that to dry out. It's probably going to dry out a little bit anyway just because of where it's located. But um, there we go. That is the lateral head of the triceps. So you can see those really well. So here we are, dorso epitrochlearis, long head of the triceps, lateral head of the triceps. All right, guys, that's it for group two. Thanks for sticking with me, and I hope you enjoy the lab. Bye.